who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, but keep His commandments. Yeah. And might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that set not their heart aright, and whose spirit was not steadfast with God. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. They kept not the covenant of God and refused to walk in His law, and forgot His works and His wonders that He showed them. Marvelous things did He in the sight of their fathers and in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He divided the sea and caused them to pass through, and He made the waters to stand as a heap. In the daytime also he led them with a cloud, and all the night with a light of fire. He clave the rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as out of the great depths. He brought streams also out of the rock and caused waters to run down like rivers. And they sinned yet more against him by pro provoking the Most High in the wilderness. And they tempted God in their heart by asking meat for their lust. Yea, they spake against God. They said, Can God furnish a table in the wilderness? Behold, He smote the rock that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can He give bread also? Can He provide flesh for His people? Therefore the Lord heard this and was wroth. So a fire was kindled against Jacob and anger also came up against Israel because they believed not in God and trusted not in His salvation. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven and had rained down manna upon them to eat and had given them of the corn of heaven, man did eat angels food. He sent them meat to the full. He caused an east wind to blow in the heaven and by his power he brought in the south wind. He rained flesh also upon them as dust and feathered fowls like as the sand of the sea. And he let it fall in the midst of their camp, round about their habitations. So did they eat and were filled. For he gave them their own desire. They were not estranged from their lust. But while their meat was yet in their mouths, the wrath of God came upon them and slew the fattest of them and smote down the chosen men of Israel. For all this they sinned still and believed not for his wondrous words. Therefore their days did he consume in vanity and their years in trouble. When he slew them, then they sought him. They returned and inquired early after God. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God, their Redeemer. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up all his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. How oft did they provoke him in the wilderness and grieve him in the desert? Yea, they turned back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. Yeah. They remembered not his hand, nor the day when he delivered them from the enemy. How he had wrought his signs in Egypt and his wonders in the field of Zoan. And he had turned their rivers into blood and their floods, and they could not drink. And he sent diverse sorts of flies among them, which devoured them, and frogs which destroyed them. He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locusts. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore trees with frost. He gave up their cattle also to the hail and their flocks to hot thunderbolts. He cast upon them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, and indignation and trouble by sending evil angels among them. He made a way to his anger. He spared not their soul from death, but gave their life over to pestilence and smote all the firstborn in Egypt the chief of their strength in the tabernacles of Ham, but made his own people go to go forth like sheep and guided them in the wilderness like a flock. And let, he led them on safely so that they feared not. But the sea overwhelmed their enemies. And he brought them to the border of the sanctuary, even to this mountain which his right hand had purchased. Yeah. 
He cast out the heathen also before them, and divided them an inheritance by line, and made the tribes of Israel to dwell in their tents. Yet they tempted and provoked the Most High God, and kept not His testimonies, but turned back and dealt unfaithfully like their fathers. They were turned aside like a deceitful bow, for they provoked Him to anger with their high places, and moved Him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, He was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel, so that He forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which He placed among men and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. He gave his people also over also unto the sword and was wroth with his inheritance. The fire consumed their young men and their maidens were not given to marriage. Their priests fell by the sword and their widows made no lamentation. Then the Lord awaked, awaked as one out of sleep and like a mighty man that shouted by reason of wine. And he smote his enemies in the hinder parts. He put them to a perpetual reproach. Moreover, he refused the tabernacle of Joseph and chose not the tribe of Ephraim, but chose the tribe of Judah, the Mount Zion, which he loved. Yeah. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces, like the earth which he hath established forever. He chose David also his servant and took him from the sheepfolds. From following the ewes great with young, he brought him to feed Jacob his people and Israel his inheritance. So he fed them according to the integrity of his heart and guided them by the skillfulness of his heart. We pray that you would open our eyes of understanding, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would speak to us tonight. Lord, I know that I am but dust. Lord, but I pray that you would fill my mouth. And Lord, use me as your mouthpiece to preach your word. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I know that there's a lot here. <coughs> and I could have taken many messages to preach this, but I feel like we've gone over uh, this in the church uh, for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, especially in our Sunday school classes, we've been... Uh, reading the Old Testament. We've gone through all these things many times and talked about these things many times. <coughs> How the people were led by the hand of God out of Egypt. Amen? Yeah. God brought them out so that they might worship Him and bring offerings to Him and, and sing praises unto Him. Yeah. And when He said that He brought them unto his mountain. He's not talking about Mount Sinai. <laughs> He's talking about his church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. And you say, well, how do you know that? Why? I mean, we know that he went to Mount Sinai and that's where he gave Moses the Ten Commandments to take to the children of Israel. How do you know he's talking about his church? He said, because he, even to this mountain, in verse 54, even to this mountain, which he, his right hand had purchased. Yeah. That's right. Amen? Who's at the right hand of God? Jesus Christ. Yeah. And who purchased the church? Jesus Christ by yeah. his own blood. That's right. Yeah. Amen? He was that lamb slain before the foundations of the yeah. world. Yeah. But they did not uh, they did not believe in his salvation as it says. They did not believe in that salvation. They wanted their own way to do things their own way. Yeah. And they made their own high places and, mm -hmm. and, and they made their own offerings and their own incense and they did things their own way. God brought them out to uh, serve Him and they went to serve other gods. Yeah. Even after He had done all these wonderful things for them. I mean, they ate angels' food. Amen? They ate the manna that came from heaven. Yeah. I mean, what miracles God did among them. But yet, as it says, that Ephraim, when he went to battle... He ran away. The children of Ephraim, being armed and carrying bows, turned back in the day of battle. You know what? That's what people do. When things get tough and they, they find out that it's a fight to serve the Lord, they give up. Yeah. 
and, and tuck their tails and run. Well, you know what? It's a fight if you're going to serve the Lord. That's right. It's a fight. And you're going to have to have on your armor, amen? Yeah. You're going to be, have to be ready for the battle when the day begins. Yeah. And when you start in the day to, for the battle, it needs to be in prayer. Yeah. And in reading God's Word. That's right. Because that's where you get your armor to fight the battle. Yeah. But we know these things, and I've preached these things many times. And there's some things that I want to look at here in this chapter. The first thing I want to look at is in the first part of the chapter in verse 1. He says, Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. <coughs> now this, believe it or not, which much of the Old Testament is, is a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you look with me in Matthew chapter 13, you'll have to bear with me tonight. I still have a cough. <coughs> I'll try not to cough into the microphone. Matthew chapter 13 and verses 34 and 35, it says, All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. <clears throat> And so that in Psalms chapter 78 being a prophecy of the Lord Jesus Christ. But why did Jesus speak in parables? Why did He utter dark sayings? Why did He uh, speak to the multitudes uh, in parables? We'll look back in Matthew chapter 13 to verses 10 through 15. <clears throat> says, starting in verse 10, And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see not, or they seeing see not, and hearing hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. So here Jesus tells his disciples why, thank you, why he spoke to the multitudes in parables. It was to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah that talked about them hearing and not being able to understand, seeing and not being able to perceive. Why? Because they didn't believe in their hearts the Word of God that spoke about Jesus Christ. That was what was wrong with the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. They didn't understand. They didn't really see with the eyes, spiritual eyes of understanding because they didn't believe what was written about Christ. Yeah. You say, well, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. Well, I want to tell you that he wasn't the first one to write anything down. Amen. They passed along the Word of God way before Moses. Now, he yeah. might have wrote the first five books of the Bible that we have, but he got it somewhere. Amen. Yeah. And I'm not just talking about the Ten Commandments, but the Bible says that God preached uh, the, the gospel to Abraham. Amen. Yeah. 
Amen. And so that gospel was passed down to Moses. And they knew the gospel, but they didn't understand it. They didn't believe it. They didn't believe that God would send His Son to die for their sins. Yeah. That's the same problem that they had when Jesus was on this earth, is they didn't believe that He had come to pay the price for their sins. Yeah. But the Bible talked about it. It was all in the Old Testament. And those that did believe were those that Jesus called when He came. Yeah. Amen? They had been studying the Scriptures mm -hmm. and knew the prophecies of the Messiah. Yeah. There was people when He was born that was waiting. Yes. Amen? They were waiting for that sign. Yeah. Some of them God didn't allow to die until they had seen the sign of the yeah. Messiah. But yet so many had their hearts hardened still. So Jesus spoke in parables so that only those who believed would understand. It's the same way today. People who don't believe can't understand the things of the Scripture because they're spiritually discerned. Amen. And the flesh cannot understand the spiritual things mm -hmm. until it is quickened in the, in the heart. In the inner man is quickened by the Spirit of God. Then yeah. can it understand. And even at that, we still don't understand everything. I've been studying the Bible since I was eight years old, and I, I don't understand. There's a lot of things that I don't understand. But that's why we keep studying, amen? Mm -hmm. That's why we keep reading God's Word. That's why we keep uh, uh, digging into it, because you know what? It's good to have your house hooked up to like electricity, but if you don't ever turn the lights on, it's not doing you any good. Amen? That's right. you got to turn the lights on. And getting into the Bible is turning the lights on. Amen. That's right. Amen? When you get into the, the Bible and you start reading and you start studying and that light comes on and you're like, wow, I've never seen that before. That's because that room was dark until God turned the light on for you. That's right. Amen? He illuminated you. Yeah. So that you would understand what is in His Word through His Holy Spirit. And you know what? That song that Dad sang not too long ago, Your Heart is Like a House. Amen? It is. Yeah. We got rooms that we don't know anything about and God turns the light on and then we see what is in those rooms and then we have to start confessing, don't we? Amen. Yeah, Amen. Right. But you know what? A lot of people have the electricity hooked up, but they don't have the lights on. Amen? Yeah. They're still living in the dark. Get into the Bible and start turning the lights on. Amen? Yeah. And right. then you start understanding and you'll see. And once you start understanding and you see, you can over, never go back. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Once you know the truth, you can't go back to ignorance. You might try. But man, God won't let you get away with it. <laughs> Amen. And if you can get away with it, then you might want to start checking your salvation. Because God's going to deal in your heart if your heart is given to Him. Yeah. And that's the problem with the people that He was talking about in Psalms chapter 78 is that they didn't give their hearts to God. They spoke great things and boasted great things with their tongues, but their hearts weren't in it. Yeah. They said, yeah, God is great. God is good. But they really didn't mean it right here in their hearts. It really right. didn't mean anything to them. Yeah. You say, yeah, those sorry people, but what about us when we sing the songs and the hymns? Yeah, we sing them, but do we really mean what we're singing? Amen. When we hear something and we amen or praise the Lord, do we really mean amen, praise the Lord? Amen. Is it really something from the heart? God knows, amen. I'm not here to judge anybody. I'm here to preach. Amen. God's the judge. His Word is the judge. God knows our hearts. God knows if we're phony or not. Amen. Just as He knew that these were phonies. But if your heart's not in it, God's not going to reveal Himself to you. Yeah. Look at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10 and verses 19 through 31 it says, 
Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which He hath consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, His flesh. And having an high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. For He is faithful, that promise. Yeah. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Yeah. For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for a judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing? And hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again the Lord shall judge his people. Yeah. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. Yeah. Amen. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. Amen. Let's not look back. Let's keep going forward. Amen? Because those who know and have the knowledge of the truth, if we sin willfully, if we leave the things that we know that we should be doing, amen? If we leave following God when we know the truth, we're under the vengeance of, and wrath of God. Amen. You say, well, the Bible says God hadn't appointed us under, unto wrath. He hasn't. Amen. But sometimes we appoint ourselves unto Amen. wrath because we get out of what God told us to do. Amen. And stop living for the Lord. And we give up and turn back and go to our old ways. And don't even know we're under the wrath of God. Amen. But as it says here, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Let me tell you, if you are the Lord's, if you are His people, the Lord shall judge His people. Amen. We're not past being judged. Amen. God has judged His people before and He'll judge His people always. Amen. Yeah. We need to keep going forward. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Amen. What we have decided to do, do with all our hearts. Amen? What we have professed with our mouths, let's keep by doing what God has said to do. Amen. History, what we find out from Psalm 78, is that history is bound to repeat itself Amen. when people refuse to learn its lessons. That's what history is there for, amen? It's for us to look back and learn the lessons of the mistakes that have happened so that we won't make those same mistakes. Sadly, people don't learn the lessons of history. In fact, we're finding that out in our nation today. You know what? You say it's okay to, for homosexuals to live in the community and to, to be outward in their homosexuality. And you say it's okay to kill babies and to murder babies. Guess what? That nation doesn't last very long. Look yeah. at history. Rome fell. All of those have failed because of all these things. Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, look at history. You say America will never fall. Well, I pray that it doesn't. But it's going to happen because people get on their knees and seek God. Amen. And turn from their wicked ways. Mm -hmm. That He'll heal this land. But if yeah. we don't, let me tell you, this, this nation is going to fall. That's right. Yeah. Why? Because history shows us that it happens. 
And the same thing that God has put in His Word, the things in this Word are for our admonition, Amen. for our example, so that we don't do the same things. Mm -hmm. So that we can see the mistakes of the past and learn from them. Because if we don't learn its lessons, we will repeat history. Yeah. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. Most people don't even know about history. It's because parents have stopped passing it down to their children, which is what he said to do. It's to pass it down to the children and the children's children. Amen. So that they don't do the mistakes of their forefathers. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verses 4 through 9, he says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. Amen. God commanded His people to teach their children. To teach their children. To pass on the lesson and the, the learning of the Holy Scriptures. Yeah. To pass that down. To teach them when you rise up. When you lay down. Amen. When you're walking by the way. Yeah. To write them on the doorpost. And on the gates. Amen. To teach our children. Yeah. Because if we fail to teach our children, they will make the same mistakes of the past that we don't want them to make. And then look a couple of chapters over to Deuteronomy chapter 11. Verses 16 through 21 it says, Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. Take heed. Amen. This is not something to, to just take haphazardly. Amen. We need to be serious about it. Take heed to yourselves. Amen. Wake up. <laughs> Quit sleeping. It is high time. Amen. If there was ever a time, it is now. Yeah. Today is the day of salvation. If you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. Amen. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you. And He shut up the heaven that there be no rain. And that the land yield not her fruit. And lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your heart and in your soul. And bind them for a sign upon your hands, that they may be as frontlets between your eyes. And ye shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house, and upon thy gates. You see, there is consequences for not taking heed to God's word. Amen. Amen. Not taking it to heart. That's, that's the problem. Is people hear the, the warnings. People hear the warnings. But they don't take it to heart. Yeah. It goes in one ear and out the other. You know how many times I heard that growing up as a kid? Scott, you don't listen. It goes in one ear and out the other. <laughs> well, praise the Lord, somewhere it kicked in. <laughs> 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 That's why I said be faithful. Amen? Yeah, man. Because just because some people seem like they're not getting it, someday they might get it. Amen? That's if you're right. faithful enough to keep on keeping on. Amen? That's right. I mean, Angela's brother Warren is a good example because he said, man, he, ought, he grew up knowing the Scriptures. He thought he got saved when he was a teenager. 
He said he had emotional experience. But sadly, that's all it was, was an emotional experience. And he said he didn't understand why he couldn't get excited about it. But when God got his heart, amen, things clicked. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is. When God gets your heart, things will start meaning something. Yeah. But we can't give up. <laughs> Amen. Just because it seems like nobody else is, is getting it don't mean that we have to give up. Yeah. God requires us to be faithful. Yeah. It is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. Amen. we got to be faithful. And then one day... Amen. One day it'll pay off. Amen. One day it will pay off. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Verse, starting in verse 1, it says, Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant, how that all our fathers were under the cloud. And all passed through the sea. And were all baptized. Yes, he used the word baptized. Amen. And were all baptized under, the, under Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. Amen. But with many of them God was not well pleased. For they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples. To the intent we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Neither be ye idolaters as were some of them as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. And you know what? That's all life is to some people. Yep. It's just a party. People work all week and they can't wait for the weekends just so they can party. That's all life is. Well, Altus is a boring place because there's nothing to do. There's no place to party. Well, if that's the way you feel, move somewhere else. Amen? <laughs> Amen? Yes. <laughs> because that's not what life is all about. Yeah. That's what God calls idolatry. Because you're serving yourself. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed, and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye as some of them also murmured and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for ensamples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Yeah. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Yeah. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee, from idolatry. You see, these things were written for our admonition to teach us that there is a payment. Amen? God is not mocked. You think God is mocked? <laughs> you think you can live your life the way you want to and not have consequences? God is not mocked. Yeah. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yeah. There are consequences to the decisions mm -hmm. that we make. Yeah. That's why the Bible tells us to be sober. Mm -hmm. Be vigilant. For our adversary, the devil, roams about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yeah. Because there, there's a battle. Mm -hmm. And it's real. Amen. We might yeah. not fight against flesh and blood, but we fight against principalities and powers. Mm -hmm. and wickedness in high places. Yeah. And we need to teach others how to put their hope in God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about a heart thing. Amen? It's not about just going through the motions. But it's about giving your heart to God. Yeah. Putting your hope 
in God. Amen. Look at Psalms 146. <laughs> <laughs> He's taking too long. But I'm going to preach as long as God wants me to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Psalms 146 and verses 5 through 10. It says, Happy is he that hath God of the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, Amen. which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. Amen? <laughs> Ask the blind man. He saw it all. Amen? Amen. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. Yeah. The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah. God takes care of us. Amen? Amen. Why would we want to leave? Yeah. Look at Titus chapter 1. You know, it's sad that some people don't think about God until they're on their deathbed. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, when you get to your deathbed, that's what you'll be thinking about. That's right, you will. And even if you're saved, you'll probably question your own salvation. Because you know your time is getting near. You know what? God will comfort you. Yeah. Yes. Amen. And if we need God in death, don't you think we need God in life? Yes. Amen. Amen. We do. Mm -hmm. I need Him every hour. Every yeah. hour I need Him. Amen. Titus chapter 1 and verses 1 through 3, it says, Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after God, godliness, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, yeah. but hath in due times manifested His word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God, our Savior. Yeah. Amen. The acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, mm -hmm. in hope of eternal life. Amen. Amen. Hope in God. Put your hope and trust in Him. Yeah. Why? Because God cannot lie. Which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Salvation He had promised before the world began. Amen. Amen. He had it all planned out from the very beginning. Yeah. Hope <coughs> in God. And then 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, and we'll be free. 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 15, it says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Amen. See, it's a heart matter. Mm -hmm. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Yeah. Amen. Sanctify God in your hearts mm -hmm. and then be ready. Ready to teach others how to trust in God. Yeah. Giving them an answer of the hope that is within you. Yeah. Yeah. Because God cannot lie. Yeah. Right. And what He has promised, He will do. Yeah. If we'll be faithful. Amen. 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 Let's stay.